to the second point, which I want to stress upon is this, uh, the innovative mindset. Now, when we say innovative, I'm not talking here of technology innovation. Technology innovation, in any case, uh, that is what our entrepreneurs and startups and all are doing. And they are the best uh, premier institutions, IITs, IICs, in conjunction with the startups, etc. That's the ecosystem where innovation. Uh, comes in. I am talking of innovative thought processes in changing our war fighting methodologies. So taking the simple example of even the existing uh, spectrum of um, uh, the, the, the UAVs, the combat UAVs, the drones. Uh, drones is a really colloquial word actually. There are specific words for it. So this is already existent. Now, how do we exploit it? Do the mechanized operations of today, for example, uh, should function as we have, the, there's a, you know, we have this fix, destroy, maneuver tactics of the mechanized operations. Is that going to hold when there's an onslaught of drones from the other side? Or should they be, how should drones be incorporated into the mechanized war, war fighting concepts to be able to uh, function in today's environment? That's one example. Let's say there was a Kargil again today. Would we again fight the same way in which we fought bunker to bunker? Or would there be initial onslaught of drones? Some examples from the Ukraine conflict. So what I'm trying to say is that we have to apply our military minds by understanding technology and trying to visualize. It's not that we have to wait for a, a high intensity conflict to occur to be able to make these changes. We have to think it out. And so this application, this innovative mindset of how to incorporate them into your tactics and operation or, or part, etc., is one area where we need to give much more focus. Some examples. Now coming on to the third aspect, you know, when we when I said that AI, I, I consider that it's going to uh, you know transform warfare. So one was in the on the decision making front, etc., that sort of a thing. But autonomous weapon systems. Now, for example, uh, the previous uh, Joint Chief of Staffs, Mark Milley, I mean, he was there a couple of years back. He made a statement a, a, a few months after he uh, he relinquished that appointment is that by, let's say, mid-30s, one-third, 25% to one-third of uh, all platforms will become autonomous in the U.S. Army, uh, with reference to the U.S. Army. That was his visualization. Yeah. Even now, the, the the CCA, which we talk about, the Collaborative Combat Aircraft, uh, that is, that's man-machine teaming. So the uh, one aircraft and several, you know, unmanned systems, etc. Now, if these and CCAs are being progressed as a project, even by our own Air Force is being progressed with great vigor. But the point is, how will all this function? Any, any autonomous weapon system which comes in, how, or even if it is piloted, but unmanned, how is it going to be incorporated? So that's where a lot of, uh, you know, uh, resource, thought process and ecosystem has to be made where the technology developers, certain amount of adaptation of technology has to take place. So there have, there have to be these uh, I, uh, premier institutions outside. They, they, you have to have war fighters. You have to technologies, technology just in uniform. So it's an entire ecosystem which has to come together to make this happen. So that's on the you know, war fighting innovation front, I would put it in that manner. Then there is uh, this issue of exploiting uh, in a manner how what we already have, exploiting it further. So we've been hearing of this Akash theory over the last three, four days. Uh, Akash theory is, is just become operational. It's just being, you know, uh, fully fielded. IACCS of the Air Force has been there for quite some time. And you have this uh, artillery command and uh, combat con command control system, ACCS, as they call it. It has been there for some time, and of course, next versions uh, need to come. Now, imagine that if we had to uh, today, we used long-range precision vector vectors to take out those militant, uh, you know, headquarters and even the airfields. That's how we went about it. But let us say we had our uh, UAVs in the air. And you had your long range precision vectors here and you had to take out mobile targets, fixed targets. You can always, you know, do without uh, observed fire. So this linking of the sensor shooter loop of whatever you already have, it requires a okay. linking up of things across the three domains of Army, Navy, Air Force, etc. And of course, within the Army itself, 
So a lot of work, uh, if, if we focus our efforts in the right direction, with a focused effort, I think a huge amount of uh, progress can be made towards future war fighting techniques.